Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. You know, there's a lot of talk about the upcoming great wealth transfer between baby boomers and the younger generation. The 401ks, the assets, the retirement funds, all being transferred down to the kids. Everybody's going to live happily ever after. But what people are not talking about is what do we do with all the stuff? Now, this affects both the people that are about to receive all the stuff and the people that are trying to get rid of all the stuff. Because you know what? Tastes have changed. Newsflash for baby boomers. When you're ready to downsize, and uh, or if you pass on, your kids don't want your stuff. There's an old uh, meme I saw once that said, uh, everybody wants my money, nobody wants my china. <laughs> Why don't they want your stuff? Well, you know, nobody wants anything that's brown. Nobody wants the old antiques, except for mid-century modern. The generation now, the millennials, uh, they, they tend to like mid-century modern. Stuff around, the you know, the 60s. But not the antiques. They don't like them. Too heavy, too old, don't like the color. Think about that for a minute. So if you're a baby boomer and your parents are still alive, you don't want their stuff either, do you? Because you're probably thinking about downsizing and they're trying to give you the china cabinets in the dining room, trying to give you all the old pots and pans, the jewelry, all the collectibles, all the art, and you're going, I, I, don't, I don't want it. When I lost my parents, um, we didn't want the house. Of course, I lived in Arizona. They lived in Washington State. My brother didn't want the house. It had white carpet, white linoleum flooring in the kitchen, um, old cabinets and uh, formica countertops with a white refrigerator, white Mac microwave, white couch, white bed, and white carpet in the master bedroom. We didn't want any of that stuff. <laughs> Dad had some good little collectibles and things and trinkets. So, so what do you do? Well, kind of start the conversation early. One of the tips and tricks that, that I've learned, I'm, I'm a certified senior real estate specialist. Sounds fancy, but it's not. You just kind of study and learn about how you deal with people in this situation. So I've got that certification in real estate. And one of the things that they really talk about is start the conversation early. You know, talk about the stuff. There may be stuff in your parents' home or your grandparents' home that's worth a lot of money. You may look at something and go, you know, where'd you get this? Oh, that was passed down to me by a couple generations ago from the great, great Mr. Blah, blah, blah. And you'll find out that that thing's worth a lot of money. And so you might want to keep that. That table you see in the corner that you don't think is worth anything, ask, where'd you get that table? It might have a story behind it. If something's got a story behind it, it's got value. But not everything has value. You know, people don't want China anymore. Uh, millennials don't, they just don't want to collect China. They... They're the Ikea generation. Minimalist. Don't make me put a china cabinet in my, uh, in my dining room to hold dishes that I'll probably only use once every five years for a special occasion. I had an ex-wife that loved china. We had two china cabinets. We had three different sets of china. We used them once. <laughs> Not a big fan of china. So I don't know what she's going to do with them. But have the conversation and uh, because sometimes there may be a piece of art there's stories about a piece of art that was hanging in a house nobody liked the picture nobody liked it at all but the frame was worth thousands it was some type of famous artist that designed that frame make arrangements to find out what kind of resources are in your area in other words are there people that can help you dispose of the antiques dispose of the furniture people that can come in and assess what things are worth now, this has to be a very casual conversation with your parents if they're elderly. Uh, some people just don't even want to talk about parting with their stuff. But you can ask questions. They want you to be very interested in their stuff. So you can ask the questions. Then you can reach out to a third party and go, you know, I kind of took some pictures and I met with my parents. I see this stuff. What do you think? Now, baby boomers, you're going to have to face the reality that over 90% of kids, which are grown adults at this point, when they inherit a house, they don't want it. They already have a house. They have their own furniture. They probably live out of town. They don't want to be a landlord. They don't want the house. 
Now that's not saying that's not true for lake property, a cabin on the lake, on the river, vacation property. They'll keep that because they'll probably use it. But your house, just consider it gone. As soon as you're gone, that, that sucker's up for sale. I have some uh, friends up in Washington State where, uh, unfortunately, their father passed away. In his garage is a 1958 um, Roadster, totally restored. I think, what's it called, a MIG? Like that? Nobody wants it. <laughs> I'll take it. So they're going to try and see if they can sell it. I guess it's worth about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 at a minimum. But nobody wants it. Nobody wants a house. So as you're planning ahead and you're thinking, okay, well, they're going to want my house. Well, if it's got a payment on it, you still owe money. They definitely don't want their house. You've passed on. Here's the payment. Think of me. They don't want the house. But plan ahead and think about that. Talk to your kids. If I go, do you want my house? Don't make an assumption. Kids, you're going to have to start that conversation. When I say kids, I mean adults. Your parents are in their 70s and 80s. Start having that conversation. Have you guys ever thought of what you want to do with all this stuff when you're gone? You may not be gone for another 20 years, but have you thought out loud about what you want to do with it? Well, yes, we'd like to give you the house. Well, Mom, what if we don't, what if we don't want the house? I've already got a really nice house. Oh, we never, we never thought of that. Okay. Because, um, I mean, I can certainly help you, you know, get it sold after you're gone. Or, and then sometimes you have to make that decision before your parents are gone because you have to help pay, help pay for their long-term care. And there's a lot of resources out there to help you with that, too. But that's a whole nother video. So planning ahead is the key. The assumption that your kids are going to take everything could not be furthest from the truth. truth. Get the jewelry appraised. Look for a nearby consignment shop. I'm reading a list here. See if somebody locally could use what you've inherited. Okay? And uh, and most of all, start mobilizing while your parents are around. Start having a conversation. Start looking around the house. Have a very, because when, when that event happens that nobody wants to see happen, when you lose your parents, now you're kind of, you're depressed and you're in a hurry. And you're in a hurry just to get rid of stuff. And then you find out, you know, six months later that that jewelry was worth $150,000. You don't want to be that person. So I hope this helps. you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick. RickHelps.com. Take care.